Um, welcome to the webinar on Splunk, uh, Log Analytics using Splunk. Uh, we, I would like to um, go over a couple of uh, housekeeping rules before we go into the webinar. Um, the first uh, is you are, by default, you are using your computer speakers. By default, that's what the GoToWebinar does. If you really wanted to dial in, you can click the telephone. Uh, and then you should be able to list some of the numbers. Uh, there's all the kind of uh, uh, local numbers that are listed there. You can dial in through that if you feel like you want to hear more accurately or if you feel I have problems with the computer speaker. We will also take the questions um, uh, via um, you know the chat window and we'll all give those answers to you at the end of the session. Um, today's presenter is Ceci Khan with the butler. Uh, he's, uh, he can go by Ceci. He leads our big data analytics team. I myself will be your moderator. I'll take care of your questions and uh, make sure that CC gets them at the end of the session. Uh, that being said, I would like to quickly introduce uh, to TechWave. Uh, TechWave is a global end-to-end -end IT services provider. We are featured in Inc. 500 fastest growing companies. Uh, we have local presence in a lot, lot of the other regions like around the globe, Middle East, Europe, uh, South Africa, APAC. Uh, we are quartered in Exton. We have a large, uh, very big uh, delivery center in Hyderabad, India, uh, and uh, we mainly focus on data analytics, um, uh, big data, cloud, um, and this is one of the area which we really love. We, I mean, some of the POCs that um, uh, Ceci is working up really excites you guys. Um, he's doing a lot of work on uh, big data analytics, and think I want to, he wants to share that knowledge across the globe. So that's part that's part of this uh, objective for this webinar. Um, I'll introduce very briefly about Sheshi. He leads our data, big data analytics, but that being said, I want him to introduce himself and go a little bit more about himself and why he, he chose big data analytics. Sheshi, uh, up to you now. Thanks, Raj. Hi, guys. Uh, my name is uh, Sheshi. Um, I lead the big data team here. Um, I am. Uh, I completed my degree uh, in biomedical engineering from the University of Michigan. Uh, my so my passion and and I guess my drive is um, seeing big data kind of help and make uh, personalized medicine available uh, to people globally uh, and make improvements in mental health. Um, I. Uh, enjoy big data because I think my love for traveling and learning different languages kind of helped me drive uh, in this field. And I hope I can share my passion and enthusiasm with you guys. So without further ado, let's get started. Um, so uh, this webinar is going to be about a log analysis, um, doing this in real time, and uh, using Splunk as a tool. Um, so, what is machine data? So, machine data is data that is generated um, as a result of a decision of an independent com computational agent or a measure of an event that is not caused by human action, according to uh, Daniel Abadi from the Yale University. So, I think that pretty much summarizes what uh, machine data is. So, let's kind of step back and look at big data as a whole. So in, um, in the last couple years, uh, we have actually produced 90% of all the data that exists on this earth. So that is um, that's a pretty stra uh, staggering um, fact to kind of uh, comprehend. Um, so can, you can imagine how fast we're uh, producing data. And majority of this data is actually uh, machine data. So uh, what is maybe some examples of machine data uh, would be web traffic logs, application event logs, uh, operating system logs, uh, GPS coordinates, sensor data, and much more. So as you can see, it's pretty much uh, uh, machine data is everywhere and all around us. Um, and it actually helps us listen to the heartbeat of an organization. So for example, let's uh, think about a doctor. When he listens to your heartbeat, he's actually able to diagnose a lot of conditions, maybe blood pressure, heart conditions, and such. So being able to use machine data and listen to the heartbeat of an organization uh, can have great impact. So it can help us monitor, manage, protect, uh, increase efficiency, and collaborate uh, 
across different departments and layers. So that will help uh, drive uh, businesses and markets. Um, at this moment, machine data is, um, there's a lot of machine data available, but people don't know how to uh, access it or um, what to do with it, how to analyze it, maybe where to put it. So there's a lot of machine data out there that needs to be analyzed. And hopefully you will have, a, uh, you guys will have an idea of how to approach this problem um, if you ever face it. So looking at uh, some of the uh, different types of machine data and how they're applicable in businesses. Uh, for example, let's take sensor data. Um, you have a vibration, temperature readings, pressure readings. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, different sensor data that can be um, collected uh, from a lot of applications and devices out there. And that can actually help in creating smart homes that can, you know, control temperature or you can control it uh, via smartphones and other things. And, uh, and in a bigger picture, smart cities, you're looking at industrial equipment, monitoring, um, and use that and use anomaly detection, which is a very key uh, thing uh, in this uh, presentation uh, to detect uh, maybe a spike in electrical usage. Uh, in your home, and that can um, help in, you know, maybe uh, you adjusting how much electricity you're using. So that's a, one application. Uh, another application is network data. You have call detail records, um, network uh, uh, records. So all of this can obviously be helped in billing, so you want to make sure you don't overuse your data, uh, capacity planning, so making sure you know, you have the product uh, demands are met. Uh, performance degradation reports, um, and then market intelligence, obviously. And then our main focus is going to be on this, the log data that is uh, out there. Um, so the log data can be generated uh, from databases, file system, application, web servers, and pretty much a lot of uh, IT uh, sectors. So obviously this can be used to uh, study security, do analytics on security, uh, detect fraud. Uh, for example, you can detect maybe failed user uh, logins outside office hours um, from a remote IP address uh, from a different country. So that, that can be used to kind of uh, detect, okay, there is a hack going on. Um, you can also apply this to e-commerce. Uh, where you can study uh, consumers uh, and how they buy and how much they're spending towards a certain product. Um, you can do performance monitoring optimization throughout your IT or throughout your whole organization. Um, usability uh, analysis and uh, a huge emphasis on debugging and troubleshooting because obviously that is one of um, the things that takes a lot of time in development. So being able to pinpoint uh, key root causes um, will help us uh, in tackling and solving these issues at a really fast pace. Uh, another thing uh, to mention is the Internet of Things, the IoT. It's getting bigger and bigger uh, every day. Um, you see fitness gear, smart cars uh, driving around in California. You have medical devices that uh, can communicate with each other. In agriculture, you have smart farming. Uh, you have energy management, like smart bulbs. So you can do all of this, and this in turn creates more and more data that, you, there, that is out there. Um, so how do we use this? How do we uh, use all this log data that's out there, and how do we make sense out of it? So there is a, a tool out there, and it is Splunk. Splunk um, is uh, was founded in 2003, um, and it was one of the first companies to actually tackle the behemoth of uh, um, the monster of the log and uh, the log uh, data that is out there. And um, it has been the leading uh, one of the leading companies that tackles um, machine data. So it's the leading platform of machine data. And according to Gartner's uh, uh, reports, uh, it has been consistently in the leader um, in the S SIEM, which is the Security Information and Event Management uh, Quadrant, uh, for the last four years. 
So that's a big achievement, and it's one of the most matured uh, softwares and companies out there. So what Splunk does is it collects and indexes machine data, it searches and investigates um, for insights, uh, you can monitor, identify issues uh, that can possibly help reduce costs associated with maintenance. Uh, you can find trends, patterns, and behaviors from your data, um, and then obviously analyze and report to large audiences. Um, this can go from the end user who, who's expert in Splunk all the way to the management level who just want to know what is happening in their organization. So, um, Splunk can be deployed as a standalone uh, from varying uh, sizes, maybe from a uh, small size that can handle like maybe for personal use or for a certain department all the way to the enterprise level and even in cloud. Um, it can also be uh, put on top of uh, Hadoop and access data from Hadoop and do uh, analyzing. Um, so th it has a wide applications and it uh, is very versatile. Okay, so here is an example of log data. So these, this is log data that you can see in Splunk. Um, as you can see, uh, it might be gibberish at first. There's a lot of numbers, there's a lot of things happening, um, and it's very hard to make sense. So manually looking through it, it's almost impossible to gain anything from this information. But if you look closer, you can see that there's a lot of hidden information in this. So for example, you can see a file location. Um, you can see that there is a process that is not being completed, it's being failed. Um, there is a error uh, in uh, a user login. So the user is uh, unable to log in, and you can see the file name, where it's going to, and the type of process. So there's a lot of information that you can gather. Um, so this is from an FTP log, so a file transfer protocol uh, log, and it will just it just tells you where the data is originating, where it's sending to. Um, so and other examples of these uh, data sources that um, machine data is produced from. Uh, we're looking at application logs. Um, you can see where you can find them, and obviously what they can tell you, like user activity, and many more. Uh, you can look at sensor data, for example. Sensor data can tell you about uh, water level monitoring uh, or machine health monitoring and smart home monitoring. Uh, you can look at, for example, web access logs that can do web analytics for uh, different websites like Amazon. Uh, eBay and such like that. Um, you can look at the uh, management and lo uh, logging APIs and manage where your data is and how much of data you're transferring and such uh, and other things like that. So there's a lot of different types of data. This is just actually a couple of it. Um, there are so much more uh, different sources and different data types, formats, uh, and applications out there. Um, and actually Splunk is able to handle that. Um, so we can use all these data logs and make sense of it. So how do we do that? So um, just a really quick overview. Um, there will be an injection phase, uh, indexing phase. You're going to be, uh, I'll go over how you an, uh, search and analyze, uh, find anomalies, correlations. I'm going to show you some visualizations. Uh, and then like examples of insights that you can gain. Uh, some alerts uh, and reports and why they're important. So the data discovery um, phase is one of the first phases you have to go through. Um, this is where you uh, understand the client's problem and then you acquire all the data that is needed to address that client's problem. So uh, in data science, that's one of the main, uh, the first thing you have to do which is data discovery. So you need to make sure you understand the data, um, get the right kind of data, get it to the right place, um, and then start working on it. And then uh, the second phase is um, getting results from the data that address the client's problem. So here you gain some initial insights um, that will help address some of uh, the client's problems. And then you move to the third phase where you do visualizations, 
Um, then you start uh, digging deeper into the data once you start understanding it more and more and uh, get uh, the full benefit and um, I guess read the data for what it is and uh, help solve the client's problem or your business objective. Okay, so here I just split it into different phases. Um, you'll have an ingestion phase, an indexing phase, You'll have a field extraction phase. That's what you call when you extract certain fields or uh, certain uh, attributes or characteristics from the data in Splunk, uh, which is the same thing as normalizing the data. Um, you do some searching and querying, uh, and from that you do some initial reports. Uh, then you can go back and dig deeper and find some anomalies and correlations. Um, then. You adapt the queries again uh, to match whatever you have found, um, and then create alerts uh, that will be that will actually bring out the true value of log analysis, um, and then uh, finalize reports and share that with um, the management or the end user. Okay, moving on to the first phase, we have ingestion and indexing. So Splunk can collect terabytes of um, data to forwarders. Um, these forwarders are um, instances of Splunk that collect the data and send it to your Splunk deployment, wherever it's deployed, your, your, you know, your center uh, of where you're going to analyze this data. So it can uh, analyze anywhere from megabytes to terabytes of data. And you can scale it pretty much depending on uh, your needs and your requirements. Uh, great thing about Splunk is that once it has gotten that data, it will uh, start aggregating the data. Um, it, how it does that is actually it extracts the timestamp that is uh, present in a log file. So this is how it normalizes the data. It takes the timestamps out of the data and then it lines everything up um, from the earliest to, uh, to from the latest to the last event. So you can see here that this is data that's been collected over a week, and um, we're looking at about uh, 400,000 events within four weeks, and it's all been split into events, um, single logs, and they have been all aggregated from over 30 different servers, from, uh, from over 15 different file data, uh, data formats, and, and then Splunk was able to automatically aggregate all the data and then give it into in a, way, a beautiful way of uh, visualizing it. And you can see that, okay, Monday um, and Tuesday you have high activity, while you know, Sunday there was a peak activity um, maybe half, halfway through the day. Um, so it tells you a lot of information it's, uh, it's all automated, so it, which is great. Um, so first, it ingests the data, and then it starts indexing it by uh, normalizing it uh, through timestamps. Um, the great thing about Splunk is that it has a very high throughput, so it can ingest data at, uh, in huge amounts um, and in real time, uh, or you can upload the data uh, and monitor it. Um, uh, as a batch file. Uh, so historic, we're talking about historical data here. There is no filtering required for this data. Um, Splunk uh, doesn't have any format restriction on it, so it can uh, almost, uh, it can actually read almost any format of data that is uh, in, in terms of log out there. So there is no filtering that is required. So there's no pre-processing. You don't have to pick and choose or, you know, I have to uh, send a specific amount of data or a specific type of data. Um, so it can do system logs, as you have seen, like the different types of logs that I've uh, shown earlier. Uh, what it does is it gives structure to unstructured data. So semi uh, log are actually semi structured. So you have, I mean, you have uh, a timestamp and you have uh, a lot of information regarding the what event has happened. So it is semi-structured, and some are uh, unstructured data in logs. 
Uh, what Splunk does is give it structure by normalizing it through timestamps, and you can customize your indexes so that it will uh, give a structure as the data is coming in. So that's a, a really great feature for Splunk. Um, moving on to the normalization. So why do you need normalization? Um, if you're getting data from uh, a thousand or more than a thousand servers, uh, these are going to be in maybe a uh, hundred thousand different formats. You need to be able to uh, normalize it in a way that you can start comparing across different organizations or different departments and different types of data. So you need a way to normalize all this data. And this is one of the toughest challenge um, for log analysis in general and in Splunk too. Um, what you have to do in Splunk is actually you can, uh, you have uh, Splunk apps that can actually automate this normalization process. Um, so 70 to 90% of this normalization can be handled through Splunk apps, and the rest of this is customizable. So you can use uh, uh, Java or uh, PowerShell script uh, or Python to customize uh, how you want to uh, shape your data when it's coming into Splunk. So after that, um, when, uh, I'll give you an example of why this data is like, it's so hard to kind of uh, normalize it. So we have log A here. This log, um, as you can see, is pretty long and pretty complicated, and there, it has a lot of information. And then you have a log B from another file. Um, but uh, we know that these two are connected somehow. How do we do this in Splunk? So you see that there is this a long um, ID number that is associated, and it's actually common between the log A and log B. Uh, we want to be able to correlate them uh, so that we can uh, understand what's happening. So maybe you want to know that this file has been compressed, changed, and then uh, it's actually processing. So how do we know that process is happening? So we need to be able to correlate uh, data and make sure we normalize it across different formats. Uh, Splunk uses uh, uh, regular expressions to uh, pull out data or uh, the key uh, or your primary key from different type of logs. So it's uh, highly dependent on the regular expression, so where it's placed. So we need to be very careful when doing this. But once you have a shell or when you have a skeleton in place, all of this is automated. Uh, auto, it's automatic pretty much. So you only need to do this once. Um, as the complexity of the data increases, the variety in formats, uh, sources, increases, uh, this becomes highly difficult. So uh, obviously you need to be using some kind of automated tool and Splunk is able to do that. So it's able to save hours and hours of um, time if you're using uh, other uh, tools maybe or if you're doing this manually. Um, so the, the opportunity cost here uh, from a business standpoint is great because you're able to do this um, once it's been the skeleton set up, uh, you can, you're able to process terabytes of data that's coming in from every different source and, and you're getting insights in real time. So that's where you can capitalize. Um, obviously, and then, and then I've mentioned that correlation it's going to enable you to get those deeper insights and like the hidden uh, insights that are within our data. The next step, obviously, is uh, once you have everything set up, you have structure to your data, uh, the data is uh, in your Splunk, uh, you need to search and query. So it uses the search language, Splunk search language, or the search processing language. Um, and you start querying them, you start building your data models, uh, you create visualizations from that, and I'm seeking insights. And it's an ongoing process here because um, as the data is coming in, as the data is changing, you need to make sure you keep up with it. So you need to keep adapting these queries um, as as the data is coming in real time, or you, you're, when you're when you gain more insights from this, you need to make sure that 
okay, did I address my client's problem and how do I make this better? Um, so as I said, as you gain more insights, you have to update your queries. Um, and you also need to make sure you write create, adapt the queries to the data type. So maybe for system logs, you're trying to get out like file location or where it's going. But then for web logs, you're trying to maybe extract like uh, customer IDs or customer, you know, the purchase item or transaction item. Um, for mobile apps, you can uh, look maybe, uh, or sec for security, uh, you can look for IP addresses. So there's, uh, you need to make sure your queries are adapted to your data type too. Uh, coding needs to be optimized. Um, this is one of the key things when you're searching querying. The way that Splunk is built, um, you need to co code efficiently so you can run faster searches, which in, in turn actually helps with low latency reports, so your reports are being generated faster uh, if, you're, if you're looking for real-time reports. And then obviously alerts uh, are more accurate and faster in real-time. Uh, one of the key differentiator um, for, from other tools out there for Splunk is its anomaly detection. It's a patented feature uh, that utilizes machine learning uh, a bit in Splunk and it helps us look for trends and patterns within our data. Um, so let's actually look at this data. Um, what the data is showing us here that there is some fatal event happening. Fatal meaning there is some process that's being broken down. So in that, um, we are able to go look through 2,000 uh, events and we were able to find trends. So we can see that 44% uh, of this data uh, was enabled to contact the host, or 7% uh, in this data was unable to determine transfer type, and the rest was file transfer failed. So using this, it actually uh, it makes a huge impact in terms of gaining insights and quickly realizing what's happening with your data um, and addressing that problem immediately. So uh, you can imagine in a business sense, uh, maybe if, if you're looking at financial services or banking, uh, if there is a fraud, um, detect, uh, if you are lacking fraud detection or if there is a fraud detection in place, you want to be able to quickly know, okay, this IP address doesn't match, uh, there's this trend that shows that uh, a lot of uh, fraud is happening in a specific area or it's away from uh, where the actual customer is. So this will kind of help in uh, detecting that uh, once if you apply this in uh, real time. And um, monitoring and alerts is one of the most critical things in Splunk or in log analytics in general. So being able to make decisions proactively uh, will increase your business opportunities. So being able to understand uh, understand what's happening with your data, um, getting those alerts uh, that uh, that will that are, that are monitoring your data that's coming in, and really uh, jumping on that situation, able being able to fix it, uh, solve an issue, will save you uh, a lot of re um, money and time, and that can you can really adapt to the market um, and always be a step ahead of maybe your competitors. So in Splunk, uh, you monitor and respond to specific events in real time or on a schedule. That's what the alerts do. Um, you can either have the alerts sent as emails, uh, notifications, webhooks, uh, logs. You trigger some uh, specific event, events to happen. Maybe you run a script when an uh, alert is being triggered. and then Or you can custom make any alerts that are necessary. So an alert uh, triggers when a search condition or specific uh, search condition is met. Um, so when or a threshold is crossed, for example, uh, maybe a, a fatal event is happening. So you want to know this immediately. This is high pr priority uh, event that should not be happening, right? So that happened. You want to know it uh, immediately instead of waiting uh, maybe a day or two to handle the situation. Uh, a customer's transaction has failed. 
Uh, you want to know that immediately instead of sitting on it and waiting for the customer to call you um, and then you know, going through that long process of what happened. So when, um, when you use this correctly and when this is implemented in, in your organization, you're able to uh, be a step ahead of everything pretty much. So you know before, before uh, as a transaction is failing, uh, uh, you are alerted to that event and uh, you, your team is ready and uh, ready to handle that situation and resolve it, maybe even before the customer realizes that there has been a transaction failure, right? And they get an SMS saying, okay, you, transact has, uh, transaction has failed and uh, you can um, uh, take care of this uh, efficiently. So that obviously uh, makes the customer happy and that's good for business. Um, you can uh, run these in real time and 24/7. So you can do this for troubleshooting and application monitoring, uh, which will, it, which is an uh, amazing thing. And if you're uh, in, into development, um, you're able to find uh, when a bug or uh, an error happens. Uh, you can monitor how efficiently your application is running. Um, that will just make it go through the development phase even faster. Um, and also, it becomes very important when the failure of cost and the downtime is large. So let's take Amazon. Uh, Amazon being down for an hour can result in maybe billions of uh, revenue lost for them. So you don't you want to avoid that. Uh, you want to get to the root cause uh, as fast as possible, as efficiently as possible, and take care of it. So alerts become very important. Uh, let's talk about some visualizations that Splunk can do or and you can do for logs. So here we're looking, um, going back to the FTP logs, uh, you can see that these are being, these files, individual files are being triggered exactly the same number of times, right? And then there's a huge increase or spike on Tuesday while there are some that you don't even actually see here. Um, so that will tell you that, okay, these, these files are being duplicated over and over again, um, but there is, uh, there is no way, a mechanism in place that will detect that there is a duplication and the process ends. So, uh, you know, you're wasting your space or you're, you're wasting your uh, CPU uh, working or server space and time uh, running these unnecessary uh, file transfers well, because there's it, it is already completed or there is a duplication present. So, and you can look at uh, data in time, uh, as a time chart, so you can compare maybe different stocks, like, okay, how was the stock at this time today versus yesterday? Uh, you can look at fatal events, again, going back um, to the trend analysis and anomaly detection. You can see that well, maybe on Tuesday there were a lot more events compared to the rest of the day. Why is this happening? And then you can get to the root cause immediately. Um, going to maybe security, uh, you can see there were some policy violations uh, in accounting or development. Um, you can see that there is some suspicious activity going at off our axis or their terminated employee IDs are being used to access your building. So it helps in uh, secu uh, security and uh, uh, threat uh, security analysis also. Um, another visualization that you can see where exactly or what uh, folder or what server your uh, data is being sent to. Um, so you can see these four are large compared to the rest of them. You can see exactly what type of failure is occurring most. So in terms of uh, maybe um, uh, quality assurance or development, you can see say that let's focus on these two types versus the rest because you know you can set your priorities straight while using uh, Splunk and getting those insights. Um, again, more there's different ways to view data bar graphs. Um, you can see that. Uh, you can see the receive logs that are happening throughout the uh, week. Uh, you can see exactly what type of event is happening. So a lot of uh, files are being moved, shuttled around. Uh, only a couple are being launched and others are stamping. So 
There's a lot of insights you can gain from this data. Um, another visualization, you can overlap different files, different or different graphs together uh, to view the data differently. Uh, if you can see, there's only one of this of this bright green present, so that you know that would be a signal to uh, to me as a Splunk user saying, okay, why is there one file that is being transferred on Tuesday and why is it not being transferred the rest of the days? So it just kind of create, uh, gain, gives you insight and then you can build more upon it and you can go analyze the data. Uh, let's go over some of the use cases. Um, in DevOps and quality assurance, uh, you can monitor an application's performance to make sure everything is running smoothly and there's no uh, bugs. So if there are bugs, um, you can immediately look at the log files and find the source of it and fix it immediately. And all of this will actually help in faster development and integration of new products. So it will get through the development phase faster. Um, in terms of network and security, uh, you can, uh, I guess, you can detect threats or service disruptions beforehand. Uh, and can start waiting for them to happen. And then also, if after an event happens, you can do some post-event forensic analysis and see, okay, where where did our security uh, fail, or uh, how did it fail, and how can we make, do uh, what what can we do to make it better? Pretty much, um, it can save millions by preventing uh, outages and ensuring uh, critical applications are always running. So uh, making sure that um, if an outage is uh, imminent, um, everyone's warned ahead of time so that the necessary precautions are taken uh, place. Um, moving on to customer and technical support, obviously as I gave you an example with um, the transactions, so able to troubleshoot technical problems uh, on a cu customer inquiry uh, will help us resolve that issue faster and uh, lead to a happier customer. In terms of compliance, uh, being able to collect and report information based on regulatory requirements uh, will just help you um, get through your daily business pretty much faster and smoothly. Uh, moving on to some customer uh, examples. So let's take an example that a customer wants to double their revenues and increase their margin uh, by 2020. What they can do, what Splunk can do for them is uh, help in freeing up resources through operational excellence and system standardization. Um, uh, an ad hoc decision um, can uh, get through the development phase faster so you can see those uh, management uh, decisions or any changes uh, go through the development uh, phase faster and being applied into the market. Uh, you can increase the pro uh, profit margins by increasing efficiency, or maybe uh, looking at reducing labor costs, or you know, uh, making sure everything is running uh, uh, efficiently and uh, there is no waste of resources anywhere. Uh, another example: uh, a customer wants to get a deeper understanding of their uh, of their customers' interaction with their organization, so. Uh, and if you're looking at e-commerce, uh, Splunk can actually show how a customer is buying, uh, track their order, um, and, in, and look at uh, your inventory, and then show how the consumer product affinity, so how likely a consumer is um, attracted to a certain product, and then the company, uh, the organization uh, can adapt to that and maybe put up a sale or uh, increase uh, uh, inventory of that and decrease inventory of the least uh, popular products. And there's much more. And all this information can directly go to management. So as I said, the visualizations and um, reporting tools uh, make it uh, easy for, uh, to be understood uh, for large audience. So the management is able to see what's happening in their organization in a, at a real time so they can make those decisions uh, proactively and then help navigate their, uh, themselves through the uh, marketplace easier. By reducing uh, some stats, I guess, for you guys, uh, by reducing 
uh, health insurance claims uh, by 4%, you're saving up to $14.5 million a year. Um, so imagine a, a, a person coming to you uh, with an insurance claim. Uh, you are able to immediately, uh, at, since you're the expert at the company about how insurance claims are handled, you can access Splunk, uh, you can put, you, uh, put in the necessary information from the customer and immediately get the information that you need. So the, uh, using log analysis, you can pinpoint, okay, this is, this is where the medical records are. Okay, this is what happened um, to this person. Um, so you can reduce labor hours instead of spending hours and hours trying to figure out where everything is. You can quickly gather that information. Um, and that will uh, resolve the issue faster and obviously make happier customers. Happier customer means good business for you. Uh, another um, example, uh, or this is an actual uh, statistic, uh, you can troubleshoot apps um, 70 to 90% faster rather than manually going through files and correlating them. So when you are developing apps, uh, when there are any errors uh, occurring in your apps, um, then you can use Splunk to get to the root cause. You can get to uh, detect any anomalies. Uh, you can dete uh, detect any uh, issues with uh, any files and then immediately know where they are and uh, what happened to them and address that problem quickly. Uh, some benefits of Splunk, um, their motto actually is any amount, any location, and any source. So they can do megabytes to terabytes of data. Um, they can get it to any location. They can get it from any location. Um, they can send it to uh, uh, any location. So you, you have some uh, Splunk customers that uh, are gathering data over uh, maybe 10 or 20 different countries. Uh, we can get it from any different source. So you're talking about maybe traffic light signals. Maybe you're getting uh, logs from servers or app, uh, mobile apps. So that you can get it from any source and any format. Um, and that's my next point. Uh, it has automatic schema. So you don't actually have to uh, pre-build any schemas in uh, Splunk, but if you do, uh, it will just make makes your life easier uh, and it's recommended. Um, and then you can, uh, it has something called uniform, universal forwarding. That's the any location. So you can pretty much send data from wherever you want to uh, wherever it's needed to be. There is no uh, working with the back end databases, so you don't have to worry about that. And then there's no need uh, to filter your data, um, as I mentioned before. So uh, you don't have to pre process it and put it into a certain format. You can put it in this unstructured or semi structured way and you can structure it once it's in Splunk. So, all of this is going to help uh, an organization go from being reactive, so uh, taking a long time to address an issue or uh, error that happens, um, and going to a proactive organization where uh, before an end user um, experiences any problem, you're, uh, you're ready and you're ready to fix that. Um, you're able to uh, adapt to the market trends um, by gaining uh, business intelligence. So there's a lot of uh, benefits from Splunk. And these are some of, some of the areas, the IT, operational management, app, business, analytics, digital, security is one of the main things. So there's a lot of application to this. Splunk, uh, some of the Splunk business statistics that they're proud of, um, they say that they, it can reduce uh, system incidents uh, up to 50%. Uh, it can make uh, faster investigation of system incidents um, by 95%, obviously. Uh, instead of manually going through all the logs and finding out where the error occurred, Splunk is you just type, you search error and you, there you go. You have all the errors that uh, occurred within your logs. Uh, you can reduce uh, in financial impact from outages, so it, preventing outages, downtime uh, of uh, your website, of, of your servers. 
a critical server, um, you're able to uh, make sure you don't have any loss. Um, you can optimize the server capacity allocation, so where how much you're saving, where it's being saved. So you optimizing all this will help too. Um, as I mentioned, um, you want this to happen in real time, obviously, but when uh, Splunk is analyzing or any analysis is happening in real time, there is bound to be some mistakes to be made. So um, you need to be thinking, uh, how do I um, make sure I am getting these insights in real time? Um, because it's important. That's what the main goal of log analysis. Um, and how do I um, make sure that it doesn't happen and it doesn't impact my business? So you can see that um, the complex event processing model is one of the ways you can prevent this. So what it does is you have a speed layer, which is real-time data. So data is coming in a very fast pace. It's real-time. Um, you're going through all the things I mentioned. So you're looking at trends, patterns. You're doing alerts, correlations, and anomalies. This is all automated. And then you are creating dashboards here where uh, you, your management is able to see what's happening in real time. But um, in order to prevent any mistakes, from happening in real time because data is coming at such a fast rate. Uh, maybe you're not, you don't have enough uh, data to find an anomaly or a, a, a specific trend. You can supplement that by having a batch layer, which is looking at uh, the data as a whole, um, historical data. Uh, you can have that and have that also run um, at the back end or uh, at specific intervals and make sure that the data that is uh, being analyzed in the speed layer is accurate and any trends and any deeper insights that you gain from maybe looking at a week's worth of data or maybe a um, year's worth of data, uh, that's all being also translated and reported to, to everyone through dashboards. Um, so uh, looking ahead in, in 2017, uh, this is a report done by Splunk. Um, we will be seeing that cloud is going to start focusing on data collection and analysis. So everyone's uh, moving to cloud, um, and Splunk already has a cloud uh, Splunk cloud option available out there, and it's, it's going to drive innovation. So you'll be um, you can access data from anywhere. Uh, you can put data into the cloud and you know pull into your Splunk from different locations. Um, going from the last slide, uh, you need to have some kind of hybrid CEP-like structure um, that is able to do real-time analytics, and that's going to uh, provide you with a very powerful immersive platform. You can um, increase transparency and visibility across DevOps. As I've given an example um, with app development, getting through the development phase faster. Uh, your uh, management level, uh, being able to uh, see what's happening, um, being able to see their decisions being implemented at a faster rate. That's going to uh, all be beneficial to your business. Uh, IT operations uh, will go from being a necessary cost center uh, to a strategic partner. So they will be uh, monitoring your health of your organization. Uh, they will be uh, recommending, you know, maybe uh, what steps to take. How do we make uh, optimization better? How do we uh, make ticket handling better? How do we? Um, there's a lot of applications out there, and obviously, uh, machine learning is. Uh, we have heard it; uh, it's being more popular and popular. But I feel like it's being overused. Uh, it is still. Uh, I guess we are still yet to see what it can uh, do in a business sense. Uh, so it still needs some applica real applications to achieve business goals. Uh, obviously, you saw that uh, you know, Splunk has the anomaly detection which uses uh, machine learning. But obviously, we can um, implement predictive analytics and a lot more things to prevent or maybe uh, hacks, uh, detect hacks before uh, the, as they're happening and prevent them in the future, prevent outages in the future. So that's, it has a, a long way to go, 
Um, we'll, so we'll be working towards that this year. Um, and sec uh, in terms of security, uh, it's going to play a very key role this year. Um, uh, we'll be moving uh, uh, through machine learning and behavior analytics and adaptive response. It, the security uh, sector will be using all of this to prevent hacks and uh, other fraud, uh, fraud from happening um, and making sure all the sensitive data is being protected. And that pretty much concludes my presentation. Um, so thanks for uh, listening to my log analysis. I hope you guys uh, see the real business value from uh, using logs out there. There is so much logs out there, and um, you can get, gain a lot of insights from it. Yeah. Uh, Ceci, uh, we have a couple of questions I'm going to uh, let you know. Uh, how does a Splunk receive data is one of the questions that I asked by one of the participants. Is it a yeah. pull? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so the data uh, is ingested through forwarders, as I mentioned, and it is actually being compressed uh, as it's coming in. Um, and when it's being indexed, they, uh, Splunk pulls in the metadata and you know displays that, and then the rest of the data actually goes into something called buckets. So uh, instead of having a database, it's what the Splunk is doing is putting into these buckets that are like that go from hot, uh, warm, and then cold and being frozen. So what that means is when a bucket is hot, so when the data goes into a hot bucket, that means this data is being is fresh, it's uh, being used uh, very uh, frequently, um, and then as uh, time span expires, uh, then it goes to warm and then cold, cold meaning, you know, you're not using it much, you just care about the metadata, and then frozen, uh, meaning that this data is too old or it's not being used at all, and eventually it's expunged. Got it. So, uh, yes. Thank you, Sissy, for that. Uh, the other question is, what are the competitors out there for log analysis? Uh, yeah, so in terms of log analytics, um, we are looking at Sumo Logic. Um, it is one of the competitors for Splunk. Uh, it's really good in terms of this uh, uh, searching and charting. Um, it's good at, uh, I guess, alerting the users. But the downside of uh, having our Sumo Logic is pretty complex compared to uh, Splunk in terms of uh, getting it to the enterprise level. Uh, there's also uh, Logly, uh, there's paper tra uh, trails, um, and then uh, we obviously we know about open source uh, options like uh, the ELK, uh, Elasticsearch, uh, Logstash, and Kibana Trio. Um, that's the open source version um, that Apache has. Got it. And what about the Spark? Somebody is asking about advantage of Splunk over Spark. Yeah, uh, so Spark uh, analytics, uh, it can do real time and batch, but it is heavily, uh, I guess you need to heavily do uh, be expert in coding and make sure that uh, all your fields or whatever attributes you're looking at are being extracted and utilized. Uh, Splunk is more straightforward, so the data is coming in, filter it, uh, there's no need to filter it. Um, it's being extracted, indexed, uh, once you have a schema in place, and uh, more simple to, I guess, uh, handle. Spark, uh, in terms of doing uh, streaming and batch, um, you will have to write different codes. The scripting is different for uh, streaming versus batch. So it gets very complex when you're trying to uh, do these analytics in Spark. And also, um, you need to have other components um, in, from Hadoop. For example, you need to attach maybe uh, Kafka or Flume or Scoop. So that it just uh, if you're trying to do this for enterprise level, it just gets complex and messy. Um, so Splunk is able to do all that, but in terms of log analytics, Splunk's the best one out there. 
Your audio is good. The, um, so we are we're almost at the time uh, of the end of the session. It's almost two um, two p.m. Central Time. So um, any other questions, guys? Please uh, feel free to uh, email us um, or uh, reach out to the email um, or contact me or um, uh, Sissy, and we will be able to answer those for you. Um, in, with the recording of this webinar, will be sent out to you. Uh, within 20, 24 to 48 hours and we'll also try to see uh, if we can put an article or a blog around it so that you guys can be informed about it okay thank you very much thank you Sissy thank you for having the session it was very informative um, uh, hope to see you again on a lot of other sessions thank you all